I must say that over the past couple of weeks, I have been perplexed by the amount of falsehoods that I have seen people believe in. Earlier, I made a video rehandling a subject I did not handle properly the first time. From dealing with all that, I've come to realize that there is not enough discussion about the truth about what our father has promised. Right now, it seems on social media, the trend is talking about conspiracy theories. People are talking about conspiracy theories all day long. There is nothing but confusion in this world. But there is not enough talk about the truth about what it is our father has actually proclaimed. You see, we know tribulation is coming, but most don't know what our father has proclaimed. And so it's important that we discuss it. In the mainstream, people have been conditioned to look at the Great Tribulation with eyes of concern because of the major themes and events that are presented. I mean, it's true, there is a lot to think about when we recognize all this prophecy and the fact that we are living through these events unfolding before our eyes. I mean, we have the rise of the one world government and a one world currency. We have the rise of the Antichrist who will try to persecute us. We have the mark of the beast, and we all know how alarmed and on edge people are with that part of the prophecy from when people were claiming that the solution that they were injecting the world with a couple years ago was the mark of the beast. We have the one world religion that's coming, where everyone will worship the beast, and we literally have to go against all of this. The time of the Great Tribulation is a time where there will be famine, earthquakes, major war and conflict, fires, plagues, and different judgments that will come upon the wicked. And so all of those thoughts can be a little overwhelming. Now with all that said, there are a great deal of people that at least believe in the end times and Bible prophecy. They are pretty in sync with all those challenges that I mentioned a minute ago. But ironically, where the confusion takes place and sets in is the promise, the millennial kingdom. Most people do not understand or know what truly awaits us. Are we going to heaven after the tribulation? What exactly is the millennial kingdom? Who will be there? What exactly are the promises of Abraham? Many questions that people are filled with. Please know and understand this. Our faith in Yahuwah will be the main thing that gets us through the times ahead. In many of my videos that I have spoken about the children of Yasharel and why their identity is important to know and understand for the end times, many do not clearly have a strong understanding of the importance of this topic because they don't have a clear understanding of the end times and what is to come, aside from the challenges that I mentioned earlier. So I want to make sure that this subject has been handled properly so that there is no confusion and people clearly understand what awaits them. So we're going to discuss the end times, the great tribulation, and the promises that awaits us after. We will discuss the coming 1,000 year reign of Messiah in his millennial kingdom. Let's begin. Okay, so for this topic, we're going to start from the beginning because it's important to have a foundation of the truth to understand biblical topics from. So many people just want to jump into the books of Revelation and understand Bible prophecy from there. But this is the exact reason why so many people don't understand it. It's important to understand the foundation from which all of Yasharel, Israel, understood Bible prophecy from. Because when Yahusha walked the earth, the Yahudim were expecting him to fulfill the end times prophecy back then. Even Yahusha himself had to go pray about it because of the pressure of the people. But the time for him was not yet granted. If we're going to understand Bible prophecy, we must start from the beginning. Now to understand this, we have to start with the promises of Abraham. Because the covenant he had with Yahuwah is the basis for all that we will receive. This is found in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 9. It says, Now Yahuwah had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as Yahuwah had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the Terabith tree of Moreh. And the Canaanites were then in the land. Then Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. 
And there he built an altar to Yahuwah, who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to Yahuwah and called on the name of Yahuwah. So Abram journeyed, going on still toward the south. That's Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 9. Also, we'll keep reading about this. It's in Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 8. When Abram was 99 years old, Yahuwah appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face and Elohim talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be Elohim to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their Elohim. That's Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 8. You see, and this is the basis of the first understanding. This was the promise of Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. There were four promises. There was the promise of one, an offspring, two, of land, three, a blessing for Abram himself, and four, the blessing of the nations through Abram. And so the land that Abraham was in is the promised land that was promised to Abraham's descendants. Abraham was given a seed, a son, that these blessings and promises were passed down through. The blessing was passed down first to his son Isaac, and then to Isaac's son, Abraham's grandson, Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, and the blessings were passed on to the 12 sons and their descendants in equal. Now, there was later on some changes in this with Levi becoming priest and the sons of Joseph becoming their own tribes, receiving the blessings and the promises. But this promise of Abraham was passed down all the way to what we know as the children of Yasharel, or better known today as Israel. In this ministry, I use more of the Hebraic translation of the name so not to confuse these people with the Rev 2.9 and 3.9s of our modern times, just so you understand that. Okay, so back to the promises. Other than Abraham being blessed, there was another promise made to him. That was the blessing of the other nations through him. And this part of the promise needs to be tabled for a moment because it did not happen yet until we get to the Messiah. It is important though, so I bring it up so you don't forget it. Now, in reference to the promise of the offsprings of Abraham, in order for that last promise about the nations being blessed through Abraham to happen, the offsprings of Abraham went through a great deal of history. There is the well-known history of Yasharel that I have gone through multiple times in different videos, so I will not dwell on this in this history. The most important point to understand and note is that Yahuwah chose the children of Yasharel as his chosen people. They were his chosen, set-apart people. Some scriptures say, And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Yasharel. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. And you shall be holy to me, for I, Yahuwah, am holy, and have separated you from the peoples, that you should be mine. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. There's so many more scriptures like this, but you should get the point if you don't already understand this. Yasharel was his chosen people. This was the seed that would carry the promises of Abraham through which the other nations would be blessed. Now understand, Yasharel was in a covenant with Yahuwah that they were required to follow. He told them what they would receive if they followed him, and they were told what they would receive if they forsook his covenant, this law. Long story short, after a great deal of history, they forsook his covenant and they were conquered. It is important to first know that the 12 tribes were separated. They were split up, and the northern kingdom, which consisted of these 10 tribes, was referred to as Yasharel. And the southern kingdom, which consisted only of Yahuda and Benjamin, is known as Yahuda or Judah. The northern kingdom, Israel, went into rebellion and wickedness first. Therefore, they were conquered and scattered first. They were conquered and taken by the Assyrians. 
and they never came back to dwell in the land. Yahuda was conquered shortly after Yasharel by the Babylonian Empire, but they eventually came back to the land. And this is when we saw Yahusha come. Now here's the deal that's often missed by most people. Our Bible has many books. Many people might read the first five books of the Torah, and maybe they have read 1st and 2nd Samuel or 1st and 2nd Kings and 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Psalms, Daniel from the Old Testament, books like that. And that's a big maybe. But most Christians, if they have actually read the Bible, they definitely have read the Gospels and the epistles of Paul and the other apostles, along with the book of Revelation. But the problem comes in with the reading of the middle of the Bible. All of these books are from the prophets. These books from the prophets are pretty much ignored as a whole. And it's easily seen that because people are skipping these books, there is a great deal of understanding lost about what is to come in the end times. And that is why people don't know what to expect. So after we went through this history of Israel and Judah being removed from the land, people know the history of the gospel when Yahusha came to the lost sheep of Israel. But what's missing is the most important parts to help us understand why we believe in Yahusha, that he's the Messiah, and what it is that we should expect from him. So what we need to do is walk through all of this. Because I've gone over this so many times and it seems that it has not been properly understood yet, I'm led to go back to another approach I used with the History of Religion series and shorten these videos to make them easier to digest and go back to. So I'm going to break these videos up into smaller digestible sizes so that everything is able to be understood and you can learn at your own pace gradually. So this is what this series will be doing. I'm going to be breaking up these topics. This one, of course, has talked about the Abrahamic Covenant, as the title says. Let's recap what this video was about so that you understand. Again, the video introduced the Abrahamic Covenant. You should have learned that this covenant can be found in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9, and Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 8. Yahuwah made a covenant with Abraham and said, I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To Abraham and his descendants he gave them land. All the land of Canaan is an everlasting possession. Yahuwah established an everlasting covenant between him and Abraham and his descendants after him. Next you should have learned that there was the promise of one, an offspring, two, of land, three, a blessing for Abraham himself, and four, the blessing of the nations through Abraham. Next, Abraham was given a seed that these blessings and promises were passed down through. The blessing was passed down first to his son Isaac and then to his son Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons and the blessings were passed on to the 12 sons and their descendants in equal. These 12 sons are known as the 12 tribes of Yasharel, Israel. Yahuwah chose the children of Yasharel as his chosen people. They were his chosen, set-apart people. This was the seed that would carry the promises of Abraham through which the other nations would be blessed. Yasharel was in a covenant with Yahuwah that they were required to follow and keep. They eventually forsook his covenant. They were split up and the northern kingdom, which consisted of ten tribes, were referred to as Israel. The southern kingdom, which consisted only of Judah and Benjamin, was referred to as Judah. They were both conquered and scattered. And if you have this level of understanding locked in, you will understand the beginning foundation to Bible prophecy. All of Bible prophecy goes back to this covenant with Abraham. I have made this list into a PDF that I put on my website. As we go through all this, I hope these PDFs can provide guidance as we go through this understanding of the end times. So for now, we will leave it right there. I sincerely pray that as we move along through this, being that it's being broken up into more digestible doses, all that seek understanding and to be ready for our Father can be better prepared. Let me just say that I do have a real sense of urgency right now. I do believe that we are knocking on the door for change, and so my urgency has me pumping out these videos before this method of communication is lost. I pray this helps everyone understand Yahuwah and the Bible more completely and properly as we strive to endure to the end and be ready for His kingdom. Please, continue to press on with patience and endurance, and do not let these videos be your only source of the word. It's just a supplement to help. Please, 
continue to study and read the scriptures diligently on your own and be ready. Be blessed. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like it and share this video with others. I hope this provides more clarity on this subject. Share this with whoever you think needs to hear it. If you have not already done so, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Y'all willing, I upload every Friday. Also, please don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. Listen, I would sincerely like to thank all those who support this ministry. Please know I'm very grateful for your love and your support. You truly make a difference in this ministry and assist me greatly with putting together these messages. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being a blessing. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.